horror my favorite genre whether it's movies books or video games i love the good old spook i have always wanted to apply my game dev experience to the horror genre so maybe it's time for a more appropriate tutorial so i'm going to help you create your very own first person horror game here's the rundown we'll start off by setting up our scene for a first person game then we'll create a first person character controller move into lighting and how you can use darkness to your advantage in this step we'll also create a flashlight that the player can turn on and off we'll add a goal so that the player has a way to win and also add an enemy so that the player has a way to lose we'll create very basic enemy ai which will be a simple behavior tree of an enemy just roaming around or chasing the player down last but not least we'll add sounds to the most important parts that require it making our game feel more alive by the way this tutorial will be split into three parts you can see what each part will cover on the screen now we are over here, so in this part I'll be going over scene setup and the first person character controller. With that said, let's roll the intro. My name is Esper, I'm a freelance game developer and I'm also a Unity asset publisher. I create assets to help simplify game development for myself and others while also providing game dev services for those that really need it. If anything I said here is something you're interested in, check out the links in the description below. Now let's get on with the video. Alright, let's discuss what we'll need before we can get started. And this is a Unity tutorial, so we're going to need the Unity game engine. You're also going to need an IDE. An IDE is basically a code editor. If you don't already have one, I recommend installing Visual Studio. You will need to create a Unity project. I'd recommend using the Universal Render Pipeline, as that's what I'll be using in this video. We need a model for our enemy. I'll have a link to a Unity package in the description that you can simply import into your project. It'll give you the enemy character model that I will be using in this video and some other things. The character is already rigged and has all the animations we will need. Now you could have a model for the player as well but since this is a single player first person game we can get away with not having one. So this is optional. For the sake of time I'll just use a capsule as the player. Since we'll be coding in this tutorial it would be great to have some basic knowledge of how code works. Classes, structs, fields, if you don't know what these are I'd recommend looking them up before watching this tutorial. However, since this is mostly a follow along, you won't really be coding anything yourself unless you want to make some customizations. So this is optional as well. That's just about everything. So now let's set up our scene. I'm not going to go over map design in this video, that's a whole topic in of itself. So let's just grab this asset from the Unity Asset Store. A link will be in the description below. Click Add to My Assets. From Unity, go to Window, Package Management, Package Manager, and search Unity Terrain. Download and import it into your project. This process may take a while, so just give it a second. After it's complete, go into Terrain Demo Scene URP Scenes folder and copy the scene here and place it wherever you want. Double click to open it. Okay, so this scene will be our starting point. You can go into Scene View and take a look around if you'd like. In the hierarchy, there are a couple of things we need to remove. Basically, delete everything from bookmarks to UI. You'll notice it says no cameras rendering in game view, don't worry about this for now. By the way, if the terrain does cause lag, you can try going into each terrain object, turning off ray tracing and reducing the detail density. It won't look as nice, but it'll help with performance. Anyway, that's all for the map. So the next step is setting up Cinemachine for a first person game. Right click an empty space in the hierarchy and click camera. From the inspector under camera settings, check post processing and maybe set an anti-aliasing method. Now right click in the hierarchy again, navigate to center machine and click center machine camera. From the inspector just set the position and rotation to zero for now. Once again from the hierarchy we'll add a capsule, this will be our player character. Set the position to zero for now. In scene view move the character to the ground and adjust the scale to something reasonable. Add an empty game object as a child of the capsule, name it camera target. Move it to the head of the capsule. Rename capsule to player. Right now, if we were to move the camera in view of the player, we are able to see them. I don't want the camera to ever see the player. I mean, it's just a capsule, there's not much to show. So we can hide the player from the camera completely by changing their layer to player. If you don't have one called player, you can just create it. And now select the camera and uncheck player from the culling mask field. The player is now invisible. 
All we have left to do now is to finish setting up Cinemachine. Click Cinemachine camera, drag and drop camera target to tracking target and set position control to follow. Set binding mode to lock to target and set all the damping to zero because we won't be using it. Now if you move the character object, the camera will follow. But we still need to make sure the camera rotates properly with the camera target object. So go back to Cinemachine camera and set rotation control to rotate with follow target. Now when we rotate the camera target, the camera follows along. By the way, if you don't want the environment to clip us out of range like this, increase the far clip plane value from Cinemachine camera so that the mountains are in range. Alright, that's all for Cinemachine setup. The next step is the character controller. Let's start by removing the capsule collider from the player and replacing it with character controller. Also, we need to detect input, so add the player input component. Click create actions and I'll just call it first person input actions. This is where you can set your input buttons for each device. We already have move and look set up for us. We don't need fire so I'll remove it. Create new actions for jump, run and flashlight by clicking the little plus sign at the top. Rename them accordingly. Now set the flashlight input to F on a keyboard. From the plus sign here, you can add a new input button. I'll just set it to button east on a gamepad. For run, I'll do left shift and left stick down. For jump, space and button south. Click run and add a press interaction and set it to press and release. This will help invoke a button up event rather than the default button down only. By the way, you don't have to stick with this control scheme if you don't want to. Feel free to map the actions to whatever keys you'd like. Also, remember to save your changes. On the player input component, you can see all the messages that will be sent to the game object. We can use these through code. Now close out of this and let's create our first script. I'll just create a new folder called scripts to keep things organized. Create a new mono behavior script, name it first person controller and open it. Switch back to unity and give the script to the player. Now switch to the script. Okay, so the first thing we're going to code is input detection. This is actually the easiest part. Start off by adding the input system namespace since we'll be using this API. Add vector2 fields that will store our move and look input. And boolean fields for run and jump. Create a method called onMove which accepts an input value parameter. This method will be called automatically by our player input component. So inside this method we'll just grab the move input from input value. Now create a similar method called onLook which will get the look value. Create one to handle the running input. Make is running equal to input value dot is pressed. Add one for our jump input which sets jump requested to equal true. Create one for the flashlight toggle as well, but we'll get back to this at a later time. Add the header attribute. A header is just a field title visible in the inspector. We're going to need a reference to the character controller so that we can actually move the character around. We also need to define the walk and run speed, so create a float field for each. Create another for jump height. Create a boolean field called disable control which we will use to prevent the player from being able to move when necessary. And don't worry about what these values equal to for now because we'll be able to change them later on. Let's quickly implement the disable control logic. If disable control is true, set move input to zero and return. Do the same thing for on look. For on run we'll simply return. On jump will be slightly different. We need to prevent jumping if the player is grounded, so add that to the if statement as well. 
OK, add another header for the look settings. We'll need a reference to the camera target for rotation purposes, so add a transform field called camera target. Add a float field that controls the look speed. Add min and max float fields for the pitch. Hitch in this case refers to the up and down rotation of the camera. We don't want the player to be able to rotate up or down all the way because that's physically impossible, so we'll use these values to prevent that from happening. Add a boolean field that, when enabled, will invert the Y rotation. Some people prefer it inverted, I'm not sure why. Add another header for other settings. Here we'll just add a gravity multiplier float field. Now create a private vector 3 field to store the velocity and add a float field for the current camera pitch. Alright, let's implement the movement logic. So if the controller has not been set, do nothing. It's a good idea to have a constant downward force so the player sticks to a downward slope. So let's add this. Now calculate the amount moved. The transform.right and transform.forward vectors update based on the object's rotation, so this ensures forward movement is always relative to the player's orientation. Get the current speed based on the is running value, and then multiply a move by speed. We need to apply gravity, so let's grab it from the physics system. Here we'll implement the jump logic. If the player is grounded and jump is requested, calculate the initial upward jump velocity needed to reach a given jump height under the current gravity. And set jump requested to false. Finally, apply the gravity multiplier. Calculate and apply the final movement by adding up move with the velocity and multiplying by delta time. Delta time basically makes movement frame rate independent. Now we should be able to move around, but we still can't look around. So let's add that logic. Create a method called apply look. If camera target has not been set, do nothing. Store the delta time and calculate yaw, which is based on the look speed. Yaw in this case refers to the left and right rotation. Calculate the pitch as well. The invert Y logic goes over here. It's pretty simple, just make pitch equal to the opposite of what it currently is. Now apply the yaw onto the character itself. This ensures the player's body correctly rotates left and right. Calculate the final pitch and clamp it within the min and max values. Apply the pitch to the camera target instead of the player's transform because we don't want the player to be literally rotating up or down. So, a couple of final things. We want both of these methods to run every frame. We can do this by calling them inside the update method which is called every frame by unity. Also, add the on application focus method. Do nothing if control is disabled. Here we're going to hide the cursor when the game has been focused. This can be done in a single line. Finally, add a teleport to method which accepts a vector 3 position parameter. We'll use this to teleport the player when necessary. For this to work properly, we need to disable the controller first, and then set the position on the transform, and then re-enable the controller. And with that, we've completed our first person character controller. Now switch back to Unity and you'll be able to see all the new properties in the first person controller component. Drag and drop the character controller to the controller field and the camera target to the camera target field. You can now enter play mode and freely move around the map. And that's all for this part of the tutorial. In the next one we'll cover lighting and add an objective.
Lighting is definitely going to be an interesting one, so make sure to check it out. Like the video if you learned something, subscribe for more content like this, and if you have any questions or video ideas, let me know in the comments down below. My name is Esper, and that's all from me for now.